Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctish channel. Fighter jets are built for two things, speed and maneuverability. Perhaps no aircraft represents these two concepts better than the F-18 Hornet. Fast, lithe, and much smaller than most other fighter jets, the F-18 is used by America and over half a dozen air forces around the world, including Finland, Spain, and Switzerland. The Swiss military especially has preferred this versatile twin-engine, multi-mission fighter aircraft over the years due to its ability to easily maneuver around mountains and through valleys. It also can operate on runways that are shorter, narrower, and more hazardous mission locations where larger planes would have trouble. Its small size to capability ratio is also why it's so popular on Navy aircraft carriers. But can it manage landing on a narrow, rural roadway in the forests of Finland? As a matter of fact, it can. Topographically, Finland is characterized by low, flat plains or hills. However, it is also Europe's most forested country, with some 75% of the land covered by trees. As one might expect, the Finnish military has decided to take advantage of its abundant natural cover. By constructing concealed military bases all across these heavily forested regions. And since airstrips would be easy to spot from the sky, the Air Force has chosen to operate from the country's rural highways. Here, the versatility of the F-18 is demonstrated yet again as it takes off and lands atop normal paved roads with zero issues. Though usually reserved for emergency situations, military strategists around the world are becoming more and more interested in this type of operation. After all, it takes months to set up a proper military base and standard runway. For a heavy-duty craft like the A-10 Warthog, being able to operate from a normal roadway would drastically improve its range and functionality. We can go operate from these really austere locations. You can run the numbers and you can fly it in the sim, uh, but there's really no replacement for actually going down and being on final and seeing the trees and seeing the power lines and knowing that those stop signs were just cut down on the side of a skinnier runway and a shorter runway than you're used to and having the confidence that you can do that and then come back and share that with the squadron and the wing and the rest of the command to know that we can operate from different austere locations that we can maneuver and that we can disperse our forces and continue to generate attack air power and employ attack air power. The Thunderbolt is by far one of the most versatile aircraft ever designed. It has multiple configurations and is typically used as a low-speed fighter or bomber. It is a bulky plane, measuring 53 feet in length, with a 57-foot wingspan. It can also carry a wide range of armaments, from Gatlin guns and cannons to missiles, rockets, and bombs. It's the perfect candidate for these austere operations, However, it takes a fair amount of planning to successfully coordinate this. 
Spotters typically work from the ground, watching as the plane makes several passes before actually touching down. The pilots need to get their airspeed just right in order to safely come to a stop before they run out of space. But what happens when there's no runway at all? Moreover, what happens when the 53-foot A-10 is replaced by a 100-foot, 76,000-pound C-130 Hercules? A workhorse for many militaries around the world, these planes can store tens of thousands of pounds of equipment and personnel in their 40-foot cargo bays. However, resupply missions don't always take them to five-star airports. So we're gonna do orange. These dirt-leaning strip approaches require a lot of coordination with men and women on the ground. Having none of the frills associated with a modern airport, these soldiers need to rely on motorcycles and trucks to spot for their pilots. They also need to investigate the landing area to make sure it is clear of harmful debris and anything else that might cause problems for the landing aircraft. The procedures and duties of AMLOs include setting up markers for the aircraft before landing and takeoff, overseeing runway safety, managing radio communication with the crew of the aircraft, and coordinating with other personnel on board. On the other hand, commercial airport operations are carried out with much more ease due to the predetermined airfield operating procedures and runway markings. The runway's centerline markings are single dashed white lines painted on the center of the runway. The runway's usable pavement is bordered with white strips, showing the edges or limits of the winching area for the plane. Solid white rectangles located approximately 1,000 feet from the threshold on each side of the center line, called aiming points, serve as a visual aiming point for a landing aircraft. Multiple white strips painted on the runway are touchdown markings that help pilots identify the area on the runway for touchdown. Besides these markings, runway lights with different colors also guide pilots while operating the plane on the runway, especially during night takeoff and landing. Red or green lights indicate the ending or starting points of a runway, whereas runway edge lights are white or yellow. Flying an aircraft may not always be as pleasing or relaxing as sighting it soaring in the sky. Dedicated efforts, meticulous planning, vigilance, and years of experience are what make a flight journey start safely and end successfully. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.